Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Thor's Lightning Takes. And let's get right to the news. But before that, I want to thank everybody who tunes into the channel. We are now at 10,000 subscribers. It's so exciting. It is very exciting. That's kind of... The channel started from nothing and you guys made it happen. No, it's awesome to know that people like listening to the banter, I think, is what really draws them in, isn't it? It's not the news, it's the banter. (laughs) I'd like to think it's also the news. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I was kidding. It's... Why not both? Why not both? All right, let's move on to the news before everyone clicks away. Like, yep, we're done here. (laughs) Yeah, like, oh my god. Unsubscribe. (laughs) All right, so... An editor from Andor talked about the changes that he and Tony Gilroy made to Rogue One. I've always been curious about this. So Everyone's been curious. I haven't heard this We've yet, heard so I'm... so many crazy things. We saw footage in the trailer that was never, never in the film. No, not even close. Like, totally different stuff. Yeah, so we all know that there's been there were changes. We just don't know the extent or what happened in post-production. And John Gilroy, brother of Tony Gilroy shed some light on them because he is also in filmmaking and he edited and worked on Rogue One. I mean, we heard rumors about heavy rewrites, heavy reworks. We just never knew. But during an episode of the Playlists and or Centric podcast, John Gilroy shared some fresh details about his experience working on both Rogue One and Andor. The entire conversation is on Spotify, but we're just going to kind of talk about the Rogue One chat because I found it immensely interesting. Much has been speculated regarding the scale of the changes made to the film in post-production, including rewrites and emergency reshoots. Gilroy didn't want to give away too much, but mentioned they were really changing things and coming up with quite a different story. His quote is, I don't know how much I'm supposed to say about that, but... It was really changing things and using all the tricks in your bag as an editor to make things work however you need to make them work, you make them work. It was actually, I mean, the basic plan was very simple. They had the movie that they had and they called Tony in. And Tony huddled for a while with another editor who was already on, Colin Gouldy, and used a lot of things he had discovered when we were just working together and just basically made a new story. It was quite a different story, and then convinced Disney to invest in that story, which was a sizable investment in time and money, and then it was just realizing what that was. So it's a new plan. You're not just going in and experimenting. No, we had a new blueprint. How curious. It is very curious that that he comes in, and he kind of looks at what they've done, looks at what he's thinking in his brain, and he goes, hmm, what if we change it? That's so strange to, like, watch a movie. I mean, because I'm assuming it's kind of cut together already. They kind of had what they were going with to watch it and then be like, I can shape this into a completely different story. Right. If I take this from here and that from there and smoosh it together, I can make this and this is better. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people have, you know, said that you can kind of tell when watching Rogue One that it doesn't... There's some things like, well, this is doesn't seem to mesh very well and now we... I mean, we already knew there were some big changes, but we're mm-hmm. we're learning just maybe how big those changes were. And it's crazy. I wonder how the actors feel watching the movie and they're like... I never said that's, that. It's so <laughs> no. different. Yeah. so different. All right. But perhaps the most interesting fragment from the conversation is how he described doing some of these sizable rewrites in the editing room with the clock ticking. Because remind you, it had a release date in a tra- like a trailer and stuff going on yeah. before they were like, we need to fix this poor movie. He goes, he says, and so we went in and just did what we did, and I had a blueprint. I didn't pay much attention to the other film, except what we're doing sometimes is we're taking a scene and we're totally retasking things in that scene. I mean, I work with a microphone right next to my AVID, and if I get into a pickle with something, I'll just mock a line in and a bridge line or whatever I have to do, and then later on it's codified. And then we get the actor to do it. So there's a lot of rewriting that can go in on the cutting room if you need to. It's just not something you want to do. For the first thing, if everybody wrote really great scripts and executed them perfectly, there'd be no need for that. But things happen, and that's another elevated level to change the trajectory of a story or a film. And it's just something people do. Literally rewriting lines and putting new words <laughs> into their mouth. Voice dubbing over, yeah. like, this is what you're saying now. And you're like, what? Wow, I would love to see the original version. 
I mean, we're never going to. No, but we're I, never going to get a hold of that thing. And it, it really makes me wonder, and no disrespect to, to Gareth Edwards, but like, I wonder what the movie would have been if Tony Gilroy and company had started. If it had just been their work. I mean, watching Andor, Andor yeah. it's like, geez, I would love to see what, what they would do with a movie yeah. that was all their own. Instead of hacking, slashing, rewriting. I mean, that, that's impressive. But we don't know. It is impressive because the movies seem to flow pretty well with all these cuts it, yeah, I mean, yeah, and retasking. It, I agree. I mean, you, you can tell that it's not a flawless, You can, like I said before, and that might be simply because you know, you know, you're going in there knowing this was kind of retooled, so you have that in your mind, so you're kind of looking for it subconsciously even. So it's hard to... Hard to know if you would just watch the film, if you would be like, oh, you know, this is maybe a little trimmed up or not quite right. Mm -hmm. But it really does make me wonder, like, what would they create if they were just allowed to create? And again, no disrespect to Gareth Edwards per se, but I would love to see, like, their complete version this of This is why I save all of our voice recordings together. If I don't like what you say, I just cut it out <laughs> I and I put, imagine, in a new, yeah. put a new line in. I can only imagine what I say in the video. I don't watch the videos, so... I Every time you. Thor's like, oh, you're stupid, I cut it out and I'm like, oh my god, you're a goddess. <laughs> no. <laughs> like, I would say you're stupid. Come on now. I mean, you are stupid, but... What? <laughs> Fixed. <laughs> he then added that such, like, a massive change, they're impossible to do in television because of all the stuff that, like, traditionally accompanies those productions. He said, when you start to experiment, which is what a lot of big features do, you know... A lot of big features, they go in, they have a weak third act, and then they shoot it, and then they see what they have, then they go back for all these gigantic reshoots, and yeah, that's a very expensive way of working. I mean, you can't do that in television. Yeah, I mean, those big expensive reshoots just don't sound feasible in TV. They barely sound feasible in <laughs> in film when you really think about how many millions of dollars it probably costs to go and kind of reshoot yeah. all these things and get all the actors back, all the crew, everything like that. I mean, so while we're not really getting in-depth details, we are getting more of the mystery of original Rogue One. Rogue Zero, some might say. <laughs> yeah, this I mean, Rogue Zero. We know that, like, in 2018, Tony Gilroy told The Hollywood Reporter that the film was originally a mess, but rather easy to fix once those involved embraced the idea that it was ultimately a movie about sacrifice. I don't think they all died in the first one. No, I thought they didn't. I thought... Gareth Edwards didn't even, I think there was a quote from Kathleen Kennedy or something about how she greenlit the whole thing where they could be killed because he kind of figured they wouldn't, Disney wouldn't let them do it. Mm. There was something like that a while back. Yeah. I mean, Tony Gilroy even won screenplay credit for this film despite, you know, be, <laughs> that is despite being brought into this whole process dangerously close to the film release. Talk about talent. Yeah. He needs to do more Star Wars. That is my, my conclusion. If Rogue One was as big of a mess as seems to be, and watching Andor, like, just let him do more. Let him do whatever he wants at this point. They should have had him come in and do a fix for the uh, last Oh, Jedi. my God. Can you imagine him have, have, have <laughs> slice, him redo the cut, sequels? Slice, cut. Yeah. Just let him go. Surgical tools. Get him in there. Get him in there. I don't know if anybody... Just get the whole Gilroy family involved. I mean, if he could save the Rise of Skywalker, that would be the most impressive thing I've ever seen. Because that to movie save is the just last such Jedi a, first. Well, I know, but that's a different kind of thing. Mm -hmm. The Rise of Skywalker is, I mean, at least the Last Jedi is kind of a cohesive to a degree. You know, mm -hmm. the Rise of Skywalker, yikes! I mean, it's not even the first Star Wars movie that's been called a mess before it was uh, released. I mean, A New Hope was called a mess before Marcia Lucas sculpted the rough cut of the early classic. We don't no we still don't know what the gareth edwards rogue one looked like and i think that's a shame i would love to to see it but he did call it a mess and, and that it was in terrible terrible trouble and now it's a fan favorite go figure go figure yeah it's widely regarded as the best one of the disney era mm -hmm. all right now our little fluff piece here today because i'm gonna call it a fluff piece bring home the galaxy it's tuesday so, yay! Some more, yeah, weekly reveals. All right, well, first off, they did reveal something interesting. Beginning today, fans can enter a Bring Home the Galaxy sweepstakes presented by Amazon for a chance to win a ultimate Star Wars fan prize package for their home. It includes books, board games, blankets, collectibles, drinkware, and more. If you go to Amazon.com slash Star Wars, you can enter, and you can enter every day <laughs> until November 30th. So oh. if anyone was interested, you have an option to try and win stuff that they don't tell you what the stuff is exactly, but you can win stuff. 
All right, on to the reveals. We have Vel Sartha, Star Wars The Black Series figure by Hasbro. Yay, this one looks good. Pre-orders are supposed to come up later in the week from somewhere. They didn't even tell us where they <laughs> were going to be going up, but keep an eye out. I'm sure you'll find them. Remember when you didn't pre-order everything? You just had to go to the store and buy it. Wasn't so long ago. Wasn't so long ago. I can't remember the last time I bought an action figure in the store. Hmm. I mean, one that I didn't have. It wasn't like, oh, there's a, another Stormtrooper. Let's just scarf him up. I like that it's a Vel and her Aldani outfit type thing. We need Coruscant we could see Vel it. as well. Well, it could also be the, like, the similar outfit that she wears when she's on Ferrix, so it's close enough. Yeah. We don't need Coruscant Vel. <laughs> Coruscant Vel. Vel. That sounds like a Sorry. word in itself. Coruscant Vel. Uh hmm. All right, and the other reveal was Lego Star Wars The Justifier. Yay. Yay. So it is, of course, the one from the Bad Batch. It includes Cad Bane, Omega, Hunter, and Toto 360. <laughs> Love the way you say Omega. Omega. The way she says it in the show. <laughs> you gotta say it the way she says it, you're not saying yeah, it right. that's her name. She pronounces it how she is her name, you know? Yeah, so. exactly. Well, that is all we got for you this time. So do take to the comments below. Tell us what you think of any and all of today's news. What do you think Rogue One looked like before Tony Gilroy got his hands on it? And so, let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.